What's going on you guys? So today we're going to be talking about my top five stock picks for 2018. I put a vote out on the community tab as far as what videos you guys wanted to see. And this video was the winner as far as the uh, next video I'm going to be doing and the videos I'm doing this week. So if you guys want to have a say in the content I put out on this channel, make sure you are voting on the community tab on the channel. It is a new YouTube feature that is really good for me to gauge whether or not you guys want certain content. Now, if you guys haven't heard, I do have official channel merchandise now. This is my investor hoodie. I have four different designs out right now. And if you guys want to check that out, I have a link to my channel merchandise in the description below. And if anyone decides to buy some merchandise, make sure you send a photo to me. The, uh, my channel email is listed under my about section of my channel. And I will put a picture of you up on my channel in one of my videos if you guys want. I think it might be kind of cool to see some of the viewers of my channel wearing my merchandise. I think it would be awesome. Uh, but I have other designs that are coming as well. I'm hoping to do one new design per month. And uh, this was actually a fan of the channel who made these designs. So if you guys are looking for any shirt designs yourself, shoot me an email and I can give you his information. But that's all I got as far as updates go. Let's go ahead and get to the point of this video and talk about my top five stock picks for 2018. Now, I'm doing this a little bit different than my normal stock pick videos. I kind of wanted to do five different categories of stocks. So number one, I have a blue chip stock pick. Number two is a recovery stock pick, a stock that's doing terrible right now that I expect will do better in the future. I have a speculative stock pick, which as you guys know, speculative is a high risk but high potential return investment. I have a growth investment, and then I have a tech investment. These are my five top picks for those categories. Number one on my list for a blue chip stock, and just to restate this guys, in case you haven't caught this in one of my earlier videos, blue chip stocks are the stocks of well-established and financially stable companies that have been around for many, many years, in some cases decades or even centuries. So my pick for this for 2018 is a stock that has been absolutely killing it in 2017, and that is Boeing. They trade under the symbol BA. They are a composite of the Dow Jones Industrial Average, and they currently pay a dividend of 2.33%. So they're a fantastic dividend and income investment. So Boeing's performance has been absolutely stellar this year. They're up 88%. To see a blue chip stock climb that much is very rare, but it's very clear to me why Boeing has performed in that way, and I expect them to continue to do very well going forward in the future. That is why they are my top blue chip pick for 2018. First of all, Boeing just recently announced a 20% increase in that dividend, which exceeds most expectations for what that dividend increase was going to be. So that is why it is a tremendous income investment. It pays a fantastic dividend at this point in time. Second of all, Boeing just announced an $18 billion share buyback program. It's always good to be seeing companies buying back their shares because that is going to decrease the market supply. And when you see that happen, you're going to see the demand for those shares increase. It's also good to see companies companies putting their money where their mouth is because when you see companies doing a share buyback it means that they believe that their shares are currently undervalued or at the very least fairly valued. You're not going to see companies doing a share buyback when that share price is sky high because they at that point know that the stock is overvalued and it would be a waste of their money to buy that stock back. So the fact that Boeing is willing to put their money where their mouth is and buy shares back from the public is again a very good sign that this stock is not overvalued. A lot of people would be concerned due to the fact that it's up 88% this year, but in the very long term, remember blue chip stocks are long term investments. I'm talking about a, a five plus year investment here on Boeing. In the long term, this stock is not overvalued. And I think evidence of that is the fact that we are seeing Boeing announcing a share buyback of $18 billion. It was also mentioned that Boeing has a record high backlog right now. So for those of you that are not familiar, Boeing makes very large airplanes. These things are really expensive. We talked about this in one of my previous videos, but it costs hundreds of millions of dollars to buy a Boeing airplane. So as you guys can imagine, Boeing doesn't just make an airplane and say, okay, let me just go put this up on the internet and sell it. They don't do that at all. They only make an airplane after it's been paid for or after it has been ordered. And as a result, it is a very predictable business model and they aren't sitting on a lot of inventory because every aircraft that is being produced has already been paid for or they already have the purchase order for it. So they're not sitting on inventory. That is one of my favorite aspects of this particular business. The other reason I like Boeing is because it is a company that gives you exposure to global markets. Boeing is a global company. It has customers all over the world and a lot of people fail to diversify outside of US markets. 
So one way you can do this is by buying companies that have global footprints. And this is one of the best examples of a company that has global footprints is Boeing because they have customers all over the world. So it gives you global exposure to different markets. So even if we did see uh, some kind of recession take place in one particular market, let's say in the United States, and then there were less people traveling, and as a result, less airlines were buying Boeing aircrafts, then other markets out there would be prospering, and as a result, they're going to be buying more Boeing aircrafts due to more travel and things like that. So the advantage to that is you are more diversified across different markets, so no one market could really heavily impact this stock. So this is a great stock to get global exposure. I like this company because it is a time-tested, durable company. It is a trusted brand. It is a business with very high barriers to entry. You're not gonna see a lot of people going out there starting an airline business. Um, Boeing has really built a reputation for themselves and uh, it pays a fantastic dividend. So my blue chip pick for 2018 is hands down Boeing, stock symbol BA. Now as far as my recovery stock goes, as far as a stock that has just been battered in this year is GE General Electric. It is the biggest loser on that Dow Jones Industrial Average this year. And now they currently do pay a dividend of 2.69%. So they still have a, a very attractive dividend even though it was cut 50% very recently. So over the last year, GE stock is down 44.2%, okay? That is absolutely terrible, especially compared to the return of the Dow Jones Industrial Average. They have been one of those stocks that has been dragging down the Dow 30. But now I do believe that we have in fact reached a bottom for GE stock. I myself am a GE stock shareholder, and I think this is a great recovery stock as far as getting into a long-term investment because the thing is, you're not going to find blue chip value like this very often. It's, it's very uncommon to see such a large, well-established and financially stable company, although GE right now will argue they're not financially stable. So it's rare to see a well-established company like GE falling on hard times, and that is why I think it is a tremendous buying opportunity. Now, before we go any further with that, understand this is a long-term play. I'm talking five years or so because these large companies, it's gonna take a lot more time for them to turn around and restructure because they are so large. So I don't expect to see much performance out of GE in the next year, but as far as the recovery stock goes, this is my number one pick as far as a stock in distress right now. I would be uh, putting my money in, in fact, I have put my money into GE stock. So GE just recently announced they are doing a 12,000 employee layoff. That's going to result in a cost savings of about $1 billion. As we said, they had to cut that dividend by 50% just because it didn't financially make sense for them to be paying that dividend due to their poor financial situation. The main issue with GE was the fact that they were involved in too many different franchises and many of them were not paying them money. They weren't making any money from those and they really had no prospects. So the whole idea here is the fact that um, they're going to lean out the businesses, lean out the franchises, and only stick to what is making them money. So there has been a change of the captain of the ship. The new CEO has taken over, the old CEO is out, and the new CEO is basically holding nothing back. He said he's going to analyze the entire company and keep what makes sense and get rid of what doesn't. And his main focus is on the investors and making sure everything GE is doing makes sense financially. That is why they cut the dividend, guys. I mean, a lot of people were hurt by that, a lot of people were scared by that, but it didn't make financial sense for them to pay that dividend, so it had to be cut. So like I said, guys, GE was just spread way too thin across way too many different uh, franchises, and they're planning on leaning out that business and uh, you know sticking to their core values. So I am in GE for the long term, probably like I said, guys, about five years or so. If you're looking for a good blue chip buying opportunity as a value investor, my pick for 2018 is General Electric. The next stock on my list for my speculative investment is Chesapeake Energy. They trade under the symbol CHK. So Chesapeake is down 52% over the last year, and they are down 88% from their high of 2014. So this is really a stock in distress. The main problem with Chesapeake Energy is their financials. They have too much debt and they don't have any cash right now. They are drowning in debt. And the main reason for that has been weak oil prices over the last couple of years. So Chesapeake Energy is a stock that is involved in oil exploration and production. And as I'm sure you guys can imagine, when oil prices are weak, there's not much exploration going on and there's not much production either. And that production is likely not profitable when oil prices are so low. 
As a result, there was a period of time where there were concerns that Chesapeake might even go bankrupt due to the fact that they were so heavily burdened with debt and they weren't making any money due to weak oil prices. The good news is over the last couple of months, we are seeing crude oil prices begin to climb. It's hard to say whether this is just a short term price move or indications of a longer term price move for crude oil prices. But for the short term, the whole bankruptcy concern is out of the question because as long as oil prices continue to climb, the worst of what has happened is behind us and Chesapeake should be able to be breaking even and eventually, you know, turning a profit here as oil prices recover. Over the last three months, oil prices are up about 12%, and as long as that continues to happen, we should see that reflected in Chesapeake earnings and them eventually returning to being a profitable and healthy company. So as far as oil stocks go, this would be the stock that I believe has the most to gain because they also have the most to lose. You're not gonna see a big oil company like Exxon Mobil go bankrupt. You know, they're financially stable, they're well-established. A company like Chesapeake, there was a serious concern for a while that they would go bankrupt. And so right now, the whole gamble with Chesapeake is, will they be able to return to profitability? Will oil prices climb again before Chesapeake goes bankrupt because they are burdened with debt? I believe they will do okay as long as oil prices continue to climb, but that is why they are my speculative pick because they are higher risk, but because of that, there is a higher potential return with them. The next stock on my list for my growth stock pick is Amazon. They trade under the symbol AMZN. Now you may argue with me and say, no, we should call Amazon a blue chip stock at this point. And the only reason that I don't, sure they meet this as far as market capitalization goes. Of course they meet this as far as being a, a large, well-established company, but Amazon does not have as long of a track record as some of these other blue chip stocks out there. So for that reason, I still consider Google and Amazon to be growth stocks because they are newer formed companies. They're not like companies like uh, Boeing or GE that have been around for decades or even centuries. They've been around for a much shorter period of time. That is why I still categorize stocks like also Facebook, um, Google, and Amazon under growth stocks. They're very large cap growth stocks, but the way these stocks have been performing, it is more indicative of a growth stock than a blue chip stock. The reason that blue chip stocks pay dividends in most cases is because their growth is not as good as some of these other companies out there. So they tend to pay dividends as a way to reward shareholders and keep them around. And the other reason I would not call Amazon a uh, blue chip stock is the fact that they are not paying a dividend and um, most blue chip stocks, they do pay dividends. So I categorize Amazon as a growth stock and they are my growth pick for 2018 and a stock that I'm currently heavily invested in both Amazon and Google. So it was definitely a tough decision between Amazon versus Google, but I had to go with Amazon as my top pick for growth for 2018. And it just has to do with the fact that Amazon has pretty much won when it comes to e-commerce. They own e-commerce at this point, guys. I read an article that said the Alexa enabled Amazon devices were their best selling products on Black Friday, which is huge because a lot of these Alexa devices are going to make lifelong customers uh, as far as you know, using Amazon goes because you can do your shopping orders right from those devices. So when you are seeing their own personal device being their best seller, it means they know exactly what people want, they're very in tune with the market, and they have great products. I also read another article that said that um, the Amazon orders should account for 50% of all online shopping this holiday season. Guys, that is absolutely insane to even wrap your head around that. Think of all the different websites out there. I know I've done holiday shopping this year and 90% of my holiday shopping has been on Amazon. I did make a few purchases on Macy's and a couple other obscure sites, but think about all the possible sites you could go onto on your computer or on your phone to buy stuff online and 50% of all of those purchases were on one site, that site being Amazon, or that's what's expected anyway. That is absolutely insane. That just goes to show you how much uh, Amazon is dominating the e-commerce space right now. My opinion with Amazon is there is more disruption to come. We saw the acquisition of Whole Foods. I'm sure we're gonna see more acquisitions in 2018, and they're just gonna to continue to dominate, and they are heading to a $1 trillion market capitalization. Amazon is one of those stocks that I have bought that I will never sell that stock unless something crazy were to happen. I'm never gonna sell my Amazon or my Google stock. I will sit on that forever. I see huge potential with these stocks, and so that is why Amazon is my growth pick for 2018. And then my final stock as far as technology 
technology goes is applied materials. They trade under the symbol AMAT. And I forgot to mention that Amazon stock is up 53.9% over the last year. Now applied materials, they are up 61.9% over the last year as well. Applied materials is the global leader in semiconductor, photovoltaic and display manufacturing equipment. So they make the actual equipment that these companies are using to make display equipment or semiconductors or displays of some kind. So the reason that I like applied materials is because it gives you exposure to the growth in semiconductors without being uh, you know, married to one specific company. So yes, you could say, oh, I like AMD or oh, I like Intel or I wanna put my money in Nvidia. The way I see it is if you invest in applied materials, you're getting indirect exposure to all of those companies because many of these companies there, they're all using the equipment that applied materials is producing. They're the global leader as far as the equipment goes for producing semiconductors and, and PV uh, uh, chips and other things like that and displays. So this gives you broad exposure to this market without picking one company because who knows, maybe Intel's the pick, maybe AMD is, my money's on AMD, maybe it's Nvidia, but why not get broad exposure to all of them by investing in the company that's providing the equipment to these larger companies. So we are seeing a huge increase in the demand for these chips, whether it be through IoT, Internet of Things, that is devices being connected to the internet and communicating with each other, whether it is smartphones that are becoming more sophisticated, whether it is autonomous driving, the bottom line is we're going to need more chips in the future. Everything's going to have a chip in it. A lot of stuff already does and someone has to make those chips and those people making those chips need equipment to do so and Applied Materials is the global leader as far as supplying that equipment goes. That is why they are my top tech stock for 2018. Another reason is because you are getting exposure to the growth of semiconductors without an astronomical PE ratio. So currently they have a PE of 16.56 and just for comparison's sake, Nvidia currently has a price to earnings ratio of 47.93. So looking at that P.E. ratio, NVIDIA is three times more expensive than Applied Materials stock. I like Applied Materials stock due to that P.E. ratio and they also pay a 0.76% dividend, which I forgot to draw on here as well. So not only are they a dividend stock, they are giving you exposure to that tech sector, to the semiconductor growth and that growth of chips without an astronomical P.E. ratio. So that is why they are my tech pick for 2018. Anyways, guys, that is all I got for this video. Let me know what you think about these picks. If you are an owner of any of these stocks, let me know in the comments section below. If you guys are looking to learn more about investing in the stock market, I do have my 17-part 12-hour stock market mastery course. It comes with access to my private stock market mastery group as well, where we discuss investing and strategize as well. Currently, membership is closed because I've had such a high volume of people joining and enrolling. I'm not trying to get as many people in there as possible. I'm trying to you know, teach people and work with people one-on-one -on -one and answer questions people have. But I am going to be opening that up soon. If you guys want to get on the waiting list for that, the link is in the description below. Make sure you check out that merchandise. Uh, link for that is in the description below as well. And uh, that's going to wrap it up, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. Drop a like if you enjoyed. And consider subscribing if you are new to my channel. And I hope you have a great rest of your day.